Because you're funny. You are genuinely funny. And you're, like, quick with, like, jokes, too. Yeah, you know? well, that's what happens when you're raised by a drug addict. You gotta get funny. You either get funny or really good at the point scale. And yeah, math wasn't my best thing, so I just had to go with funny. So I was, uh, I grew up splitting my time between Tucson and Monterey. And uh, in Tucson, I would live with my mom, who uh, married a coke dealer. And uh, she was, um, she was crazy. I used to call her Frank. She hated it. And then, um, so I lived in Tucson, uh, and then I would come out to see my dad during the winters, and I'd be like a different person. Like me and my dad would surf and work on the house. And then they'd send me back to, to hell, I mean Tucson, and then I would have to like live with my mom. So uh, it was like, uh, it like wasn't the best upbringing. You know, I, um, I don't know, I don't talk about it very much because it's like, it's kind of personal. Yeah. But, um, but I lived with my mom till I was about 15, and then I guess I got too tall to live in the house. And uh, and then she kicked me out, which was probably like the nicest thing she ever did for me. And then uh, oh, my mom was crazy. She used to do crazy shit. So they'd be playing Yahtzee all night long. And I don't know if you've ever been around a bunch of cokeheads that play Yahtzee, but it's fucking loud. And I'd be like in my room screaming like, shut up, you fucking cokeheads. And then my mom would come in here and, and like they would be like, we're not doing coke, I swear. And then uh, I'd wake up in the morning and they'd be all sweaty. The same, I remember one time they were like, my mom got them all the, like, cause it'd be a bunch of drag queens. And they were all in a circle sewing this fucking, some sequins onto a dress. And by the time I came, woke up in the morning, the whole dress was all sequins. Like nobody stopped. And that was like, that was like run of the mill shit for me. And then, uh. Was that hard to do? Like, what is sewing a dress like and turning it into one sequence? I don't know, but they were focused. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, they were, like, on it. So, uh, what happened after I was 15? Oh, I, um, I decided that I was a gangster, which was a horrible mistake, because I'm not a gangster, and my only fighting move is blocking punches with my face. So, like... (laughs) So I could, uh, I continued to get me, I might, like, I've been in a bunch of fights, right? And my record is, like, I think I've won, like, four. Like, and those guys were sucked at fighting. (laughs) (laughs) How many times have you gotten your butt beaten? Oh, easily 20 times. Are you serious? Yeah. Why do you keep fighting, then? Uh, because they don't find me funny. (laughs) Like, it's not like I go find somebody to fight. What happens is I see something about somebody that's funny and I tease them and then they punch me in the face. Really? Yeah. Or when I was younger in Tucson it was like you had to fight. Like, So I got a little brother who's a, got a lot of physical disabilities and so if somebody teased him then I would go fight them. Like every time. Like I love my little brother and I was not going to let anybody tease him. Was this happening like at like school or like? Yeah, it happened at school okay. a lot, of, and a lot of time we'd meet up after school. In fact, in fourth grade, I got jumped and thrown down a flight of cement stairs. How how many stairs? It was like I don't know, like like eight or twelve of them. Damn! I fucking cracked my head on the bottom one, and then a bunch of blood came out, which I've which caused everybody to run away mm-hmm. when I had to go home with my face all bloody, and my mom she, she can't like. She, like, turned, like, she doesn't do well with blood. Mm-hmm. So I had to, like, sit on the table and wait for her fucking wife to come home to stitch me up. Your mom had a wife? Yeah. Yeah, my mom's had two wives. Dang, okay. Yeah. Because she, apparently, she can't keep one. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, last time we were here, you were saying that you were around, uh, like, you've, you've been hanging out with, uh, like, drag queens your whole life? Is that yeah, yeah, that's um, my mom's friends. Okay. Yeah. Were they like nice that. to you, treated you well? Yeah, you know, like, just like everybody else, some were nice, some were dicks. I mean, they all had dicks, but... <laughs> and then how did you end up on the Central Coast? Because right now we're in Los Osos. Like, how did you end so, up here? 
I was living in Tucson, um, just being a fucking tweaker, doing tweaky things, and um, and my mom and brother moved out here, and I've always been like stayed close to my brother. So what well, I was in, no, then I'd been up in Reading, yeah, no, they moved out here, and I was in Tucson. I was a tweaker run wild. I may or may not have shot somebody in their foot and decided it was time to leave Tucson. <laughs> and I, I went to my dad's and I was like, dude, I need help. And he misunderstood what I meant by help. What I meant was I needed a new car, some money, and then like a meth lab. And what he thought is I needed rehab. And uh, so I argued with him for a while and then I went to sleep and I woke up in a rehab. And, uh, and in rehab I met this guy who, uh, his dad lived in Reading. So I was like, let's go ruin his life. So we went up there and then I was, when I was in Reading, I kept going to the hospital because I'm diabetic. And I don't know if you know this, but diabetics and a uh, full diet of methamphetamines create issues. And, uh, and they called my mom and I told her that it was just the diabetes and I was gonna come back down. So then she bought me a bus ticket and I almost made it all the way here. I got to Sacramento and um, I had tried heroin for the first time before I got on the bus, which sucked. Cause so at first I was like, oh yeah, this is great. I feel like I'm sitting in God's lap. Like I see why people do this. And then I sat down next to this guy who was sleeping and then my stomach flipped and I yacked all over his shoes oh. while he was asleep and I just slowly got up and moved to the back. <laughs> It's like Slumlord Matt starting. <laughs> what does heroin feel like? It feels like you're sitting in God's lap. It's just the best it's feeling just, ever. No it's pain. Super warm. You, your whole body warms up. And you're happy. I was like, oh yeah, I'm not thinking about any of the shitty shit I do. And then you throw up, and that part I wasn't all right with. Yeah. And then so I got to Sacramento, and I was like sick, and I told them that I needed ice chips. But I had like two cents to my name and they wouldn't give me ice chips. Mm -hmm. So I threw a fit and laid down on the floor and I was like, call an ambulance then. And then, uh, and then I made it back here and then that's how I got to the Central Coast. Have you been here ever since? Yeah, yeah, I'm like a cockroach. I don't leave unless you make me. <laughs> <laughs> what have you, have you just like been like in this house? Have you uh, like lived in other cities besides Los Osos? Yeah, so I lived, I've lived in Morro Bay, AG, I lived in Atascadero. Atascadero was a nightmare because it was like, so I was living with my, that's where my mom and brother lived with my aunt, and then uh, my uncle was a crime scene detective over there, and I was like, let me live here, and they were like, you're a dirty tweaker, you can live in the garage, but you're not allowed in the house unless the cop's here. <laughs> <laughs> so the chihuahuas, there's two chihuahuas that had more house privileges than I did. You have like a like a fridge and like a cook stove out in the garage so you can like make food and stuff? No, I had to wait for my uncle to come home and come upstairs. Oh, okay. All that was there was I could walk outside and drink out of the hose. Nice. Yeah. I'm telling you, the dogs had cold water and bowls <laughs> and food and the little tweaker in the garage got access to the hose and a cot. <laughs> rent free? Rent, uh, yeah, rent free. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, I'm a slumlord, but that would have been really slumlord. 700 bucks a month for a <laughs> yeah. hose and a <laughs> That's where it's at now. Yeah, seriously. You're kind of like in charge of this household, it feels like. Like you'll yeah, pull up on here, come kick it with Austin, like you'll throw on like some UFC fights. Like 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 uh, last time we were here, you guys were talking about uh, like the maids you have coming over and like cleaning shit and you're like giving people money and saying like give the maids tips and stuff. Like Oh yeah, so so I have the lease to this place and I rent out the rooms. Like before um, they lived here I lived this uh, I lived here with um, this other girl and then her kid. And I was helping her raise her kid. And then, apparently, I'm intolerable, so they had to leave. And then, um, so, yeah, like, the maids are, so I like to have the house clean, right? Yeah, it, it looks pretty clean. Yeah, but I don't have the energy to do it anymore because I've got chronic kidney disease and I'm on dialysis. Shit. So, like, I just don't have the energy to scrub the whole, the whole house the way it needs to. So, instead of being, like, 
psycho and be like, you guys need to do all this stuff because I want it done, which doesn't seem fair at all. I just hire some maids. And then I, like, I mean, they're expensive, but they do, I mean, they, I don't want to clean and piss off the toilet. Yeah. I mean, I got, this guy's got one leg. There's no way he's aiming correctly. <laughs> <laughs> do they, uh, like, vacuum the floors, 